Welcome to Astro Psyche, an exploration of depth psychological astrology. I'm your host, Shauna McGrath, and this is episode one of the podcast. So I'm very excited to share this initial podcast, this initial episode with you, and um, this will be a sort of intention setting. Um, for the podcast, where I will tell you a little bit about what to expect, a little bit about me, and um, yeah, basically um, setting some intentions and an outline of what I would like this podcast to look like. And then, of course, um, some opportunity for you to let me know uh, what it is that you would like to hear as well. So the idea for Astro Psyche um, to break it down a bit on exactly what that means. And uh, I wanted to also speak a bit about what depth psychology means in particular and why we'll be applying that to astrology. Um, so astro, um, the, that is the, the root of the word astrology. Astrology essentially means the study of the celestial realm. We could say the study of the stars or the study of the planets, um, but more um, accurately and more broadly, astrology encompasses the study and meaning making of celestial events. So that means anything in the sky, essentially. So anything from um, fixed stars to the moon, the sun, the planets, and I would even put weather patterning um, in there as well. Now, that's not something that many people practice these days, but at one point in time, um, that was a practice as well, doing divination um, through looking at the clouds. Uh, so that is the astro piece of this. And psyche essentially means soul, spirit or soul. So psychology literally translated um, means the study, ology is um, study, and um, psyche initially um, was meant to mean soul or spirit or one's essence uh, at an individual level. And so uh, psychology is really the study of soul. Now, in a modern sense, we think of that as more of the study of the mind. Um, and that is, yeah, that's just our more modern take on um, the mind being separated from the spiritual element. So in this podcast, I'm really coming at it from the study of astrology from a soul perspective. So um, Depth psychology in particular is a, a subset of psychology that is interested in unconscious motives, unconscious dynamics. So um, there's many different styles and approaches of psychology. Um, depth psychology in particular um, started with Freud, was elaborated on um, by Carl Jung and um, many, many other um, great minds, but that was kind of where it originated, this idea um, with uh, Freud and Jung that there are, that there are um, ideas and thoughts and emotions, feelings that we have that we are not consciously aware of. Now, Freud thought that um, that was more at a personal level. Jung thought that there was more of a collective presence. And so um, I'll be talking about that more in other episodes, but uh, just to give you a grasp of what depth psychology is, it is really focused on uncovering what is hidden, um, what is hidden at an individual level and from a collective level. What is, um, yeah, what is that? Um, that which we do not know. And I think um, that is really interesting. And that is really interesting when we apply it to astrology, because astrology is all about this process of discovery, this process of knowing, um, this process of attuning to psyche at an energetic level and at a subtle level. And what it is that 
is going on symbolically in the background. And so um, a big piece of this is that astrology and psychology are often used sort of in tandem. Um, but there, there isn't often a focus on the unconscious portion. And um, a big part of why I wanted to start this podcast is to essentially express and explore um, my ideas in preparation for my master's thesis. So um, this feels like another uh, a good point to provide you with a disclosure that um, though we will be talking about psychology and astrology, um, I am not a licensed therapist. This podcast uh, is not a substitute for mental health care, for legal or medical advice. And so if that is something that you need, I highly encourage you to seek that out. Um, but this podcast is not in any way intended to be a substitute for therapy or for professional mental health care. Uh, rather, it's intended to be um, an exploration of how we can use astrology from a depth psychological perspective. So this podcast is for anyone that's interested in learning more about astrology, especially from that psychological perspective. So this is for you if you're interested in learning more. Um, maybe you happen to be in the mental health field and you're interested in how to incorporate astrology into um, your own personal practice or the work that you do, um, or you're just interested in these topics like I am. Uh, so, so that disclosure out of the way, um, I am currently in a master's in counseling psychology program with an emphasis on depth psychology. And so a part of that process is writing a thesis on a particular topic of study. And so um, my thesis at this point in time is exploring how astrology can be used in a psychotherapeutic setting within the context of depth psychotherapy. And so um, this feels like a big topic to me and one that I'm very passionate about and very interested in exploring, um, but it feels sort of like a, um, uh, a lot to put my arms around. And so I'm really looking forward to exploring that um, in future episodes and sharing with you what it is that I find in my literature review. Um, my goal is to review maybe one piece of literature, um, whether that is a quote or um, even a larger piece of work at a time in each episode and to sort of Chew, chew on it, talk through it in the episode, and in that process to um, process my ideas verbally, but then also provide you with some food for thought as well, whether that's inspiration or just looking at things in a different way, and to explore this thing called astrology from that depth psychology perspective. Um, my hope also is to provide a contribution to the field of astrology, to um, provide more, um, yeah, more for us to, to talk about, like, how is it that astrology can be applied at a psychotherapeutic level? And um, what is the literature that exists out there? Um, especially when I say literature, um, I'm talking like, um, more academically oriented books or peer-reviewed articles and um, pieces that have been written, especially within the psychotherapy field. Um, so yeah, so my hope is to um, humbly offer um, some interesting um, pieces of information to the field of astrology as well. Uh, so, with that being said, I have um, the initial piece that I wanted to start with today, um, which I will share with you. So this, so I'm reading today from a book titled Jung's Studies in Astrology, Prophecy, Magic, and the Qualities of Time. 
The author is Liz Green. Last name is G-R-E-E-N-E, -E -E, and I'll put this in the show notes. Um, so this was published pretty recently. I'll give you the date on it. And it's essentially um, a review and study of Jung's writings regarding astrology and the variety of different ways and contexts in which he writes about it. So um, this was published in 2018 by Liz Green. So uh, Liz Green is a Jungian analyst um, as well as an astrologer. So that essentially means that she is a psychotherapist, uh, particularly within the style and approach of Carl Jung, which again is oriented around um, working with the unconscious, especially through dreams and um, through myth and symbolic events. Uh, let's see. So yeah, so uh, that is the, the book that I'm reading from. And so uh, she does this really fantastic review of all the different ways in which Jung talks about astrology. Um, I feel like there's something else that I wanted to say about that, but it's escaping me now. So um, so we'll jump in. Oh, yes. So, um, so Jung wrote a bit about astrology and it's really interesting because you wouldn't know that. So um, a little bit about Carl Jung. Um, he was a Swiss um, psychiatrist um, in the early 1900s. Um, and he was particularly taken by this idea of the unconscious. Um, he studied with uh, Freud, worked with Freud, and then elaborated on Freud's ideas. And um, we get from Carl Jung the idea of the collective unconscious. Um, we get from Carl Jung the idea of archetypes, that there are symbols present within um, humanity that are that we all share. Um, and that's again, a big topic in itself. Um, but we also get like the psychological types that came out that was um, came out of Jung's work as well, the idea that people are introverted or extroverted, um, that people are thinkers versus feelers, etc. And so um, my point is that there's the psychology that we have today is highly influenced by the work of Carl Jung. And yet um, he, he researched and studied and wrote quite a bit about astrology, but you wouldn't know that. You wouldn't, that's not necessarily as mainstream as I think it could be. Um, so what's really cool about this book uh, by Liz Green, Jung's Studies in Astrology, is that we get a little more insight into just the, the concept that he took astrology seriously, that he saw it as a valuable tool. So uh, what I will read to you now is a quote from Jung. Um, this was written in a letter that he wrote to uh, an astrologer, an Indian astrologer, B.V. Raman. It was um, written in 1947. And he says, as I am a psychologist, as I am a psychologist, I'm chiefly interested in the particular light the horoscope sheds on certain complications in the character. In cases of difficult psychological diagnosis, I usually get a horoscope in order to have a further point of view from an entirely different angle. I must say that very often I find that the astrological data elucidated certain points which I otherwise would have been unable to understand. From such experiences, I formed the opinion that astrology is of particular interest to the psychologist. And so um, I want to just break this down just a little bit. So I think this is really interesting because um, he's saying a few different things here. First, he's saying that the horoscope, when he says horoscope, that means the natal chart or the birth chart. Um, I would even endeavor to say that he considers the transits as well, um, the timing, that the natal horoscope 
it sheds light on certain complicated issues in the character. So in, per, in a person's, their personality or their way of being, it helps him to understand who a person is and how they are so that he can connect with them from a psychological perspective. Uh, now he also says, in a case of psychological diagnosis, so we could say like assessment, I, I would also um, in layman's term, just say again, like this, how to understand what is going on with a person, like what is really happening here. He usually gets a horoscope in order to further understand from, from a very different angle. Uh, then, um, he says that very often he has found, or he did find, that this astrological data uh, illuminates certain points which he would have un which he would have otherwise been unable to understand. So I think to me this is huge. Like this is saying that without the assistance of this astrology horoscope, there is something that is that may be missed. Now, I think that uh, I think that psychology is an art as well as a science. And what's really cool about astrology is that it helps us tune in to what it is that we already know, that we <laughs> that we don't know that we know, I guess. Uh, like this is the unconscious. And so it's helping him tune into things at, at a different level. There's almost this um, intuitive capacity that astrology helps us tap into. And so I think that what's important to know here is that it's not that astrology is an objective, um, scientifically quantitative, measurable tool. Rather, astrology is a practice, an art, a symbolic language that helps us understand things in a symbolic way. And when we are working with psyche, we must speak in a symbolic language. And astrology helps us to do that. So I think that's, that's really what's going on here. And so I think that is so important because uh, there is the technical aspect, the technical part of astrology, where we learn um, Venus is a symbol of relationships. The moon is a symbol of emotions. The sun is a symbol of the ego, the self, the spiritual component of the individual. Those are all uh, the more technical kind of like um, building blocks. But something very different, something more artistic, something more uh, symbolic and language-like happens when we read a horoscope. Um, it's not the, the, the sum of the parts, the sum, yeah, the, the, the sum of all of the parts into the whole is greater and much more complex than the parts, the individual parts themselves. And so um, I think, and this is something that I want to explore in future podcasts, because it's, I think this is why um, it's so important for us to honor astrology as a moment in time, a sacred practice, a sacred art, even when it is used in the context of psychotherapy. It is a symbolic communication between the client and the and the the clinician so whether that that is the clinician is a therapist or a psychologist or an astrologer there is this particular moment in time where this thing is happening and to strip that of the moment to um you know being able to do like um i'm just comparing this to like saying uh you know venus in Aries always means X, Y, and Z. Like it's, yes, we have to have those certain um, guidelines, 
But when there is the moment of reading the chart, it's kind of like something else happens. Um, there is this synchronicity. That's also a uh, synchronicity is also a term that came from Carl Jung. Um, we can think of a synchronicity as this, this moment of correlation between an external event and an internal event. Something happens outside of us and it sparks meaning inside. So there's one last quote uh, from Carl Jung that I want to read and then, um, and then I think we'll wrap things up. But uh, this, I wanted to read uh, alongside this other quote. So this is another letter a uh, side note, one thing that I've, in, that I've noticed is um, we get so much about Jung's um, theories and concepts in the letters that he wrote. Uh, he corresponded with, um, with many different people, uh, like volumes of correspondence. Um, and I like reading some of the letters that he wrote because you can get his ideas kind of more in uh, easier to digest um, ways. So that's why a lot of his letters are quoted. Uh, so this is a letter that he wrote to a French astrologer, Andre Barbault. This was written in 1954. So a little bit later um, than the quote that I just wrote. So Jung writes, there are many instances of striking analogies between astrological constellations and psychological events. Astrology, like the collective unconscious with which psychology is concerned, consists of symbolic configurations. The planets are symbols of the powers of the unconscious. I would say that the astrologer does not always consider their statements to be mere possibilities. The interpretation is sometimes too literal and not symbolic enough. And so here, um, there's sort of two different pieces of this. First, um, Jung is making the point that astrology correlates to psychological events. And so I would liken that to um, a person's inner experience. So that can be anything from your mood, um, the experiences that you're having, whether that is going through, um, in his case, you know, he was working with clients who were going through, going through psychological events, whether that was depression or a crisis of identity or, um, you know, manic moods or, um, anything like this, um, a crisis of, um, faith, things like this. Uh, so he was saying that that we can make a correlation between astrology and psychological events. Uh, he also said that astrology is a symbol of the unconscious. So astrology is a symbolic language. And the way that Jung saw it was that there was this collective unconscious that we all participate in. We all have these energies of the mother, the child, the warrior, the trickster, things like this. And he saw that astrology was used in a very similar way. There were these sort of, um, there were these, the planets and the constellations and the aspects and the houses, which each one held a certain collection of themes in the way that archetypes hold a collection of symbols. And so he saw a useful correlation there because it's not just that astrology was that way, but it was that astrology correlated to psychological events so that we can make meaning of psychological events and we can understand them and we can not just say, oh, you're having 
um, Saturn conjunct your moon at this point in time. And so that means that you're going to be challenged or maybe feel stressed or really um, have a lot of work or have a low mood. No, it wasn't just to predict, it was to understand um, what's going on. So a person comes in with low mood and you see that they have Saturn conjunct the moon. It's like, okay, what what is happening in that person's life? What are their experiences? Um, how is this Saturn, which is about um, not just work and effort and boundaries, but also um, but also devotion and rising to the occasion and engaging with the material world at an emotional level, moon. So like how, what are the other um, possibilities? And, how is it that a person can meet those at this point in time? Like it's, it's essentially like, how do we dialogue with psyche through our actions? So the last piece of this quote is um, he, he makes this point that sometimes astrologers interpretations are too literal and not symbolic enough. Now um, Jung studied uh, a lot of the um, astrologers who wrote in the medieval period. And so um, medieval astrology is very um, predictive and it, it does tend to be more um, literal, uh, like XYZ is going to happen to you or you are going to be this way. And um, Luckily in our modern times, our lives are not necessarily that way. We have more resources. Um, we have more possibilities just with things like modern technology and modern medicine. Um, and so, so there's that, that piece that he was bringing more of a modern context to it, but he was also saying that he was also coming at it from more of a psychological a depth psychological perspective that it's not just this literal thing that's happening. It's like, what is going on internally for this person? What is the working, the inner working that we're dealing with here? And, uh, you know, I think there can be great value in a literal prediction through astrology. Um, but there can also be great value in a more symbolic dialogue around astrology. And I think that's what he was getting at because, um, again, when, uh, when Jung wrote this in 1954, we didn't have, we really didn't have psychological astrology. Psychological astrology in the, um, the 60s and the 70s came out of um, the reemergence of astrology along with the understanding of Jung's work. And so, uh, so that's really the core of this is that astrology is a powerful tool to dialogue with psyche in a symbolic way so that we can live in a symbolic way from a place of from a place of depth, a place of autonomy. I thank you so much for being with me on this journey of Astro Psyche. If you're interested in learning more about me or even um, getting an astrology reading with me, you can find out more information at shaunamcgrath.com. If you enjoyed this episode and um, you want to share it with a friend, I would love that. And um, make sure that you um, subscribe wherever you find this podcast. Uh, you can also sign up for my newsletter on my website as well, um, shaunamcgrath.com. I am sending you so much uh, love and wisdom and fulfillment and blessings for the future. Until next time. Bye for now.